we're fine. Oh, he's actually going to evolve this. So I could just, if he doesn't have, and some people aren't playing guilt. Hey, what's up guys, the Jordan here, back again with another Shadowburst deck and gameplay video. Uh, a while back, I did a Terraformer video, and it actually popped off quite a bit. It got quite a bit of views compared to my other Shadowburst videos. Um, however, that deck uh, was... I made that I made that deck when it was still a pretty new deck, like not many people were playing Terraformer. Um, but over the last couple weeks, it really picked up and is now like one of the top decks in the meta at the moment. Um, so of, naturally, there's a lot of revisions, a lot of refinements that was made to that previous deck list. Um, so from compared to before, where that Terraformer list was more uh, Greenwood Guardian based, this Terraformer list, or the more popular ones nowadays, are more Accelerated based. So we have a lot of the Accelerate cards that we got from the Fortune's Hand expansion. And recently, like, um, on my previous streams and stuff, I've been playing the list that's been playing, like, monkey, mallet monkeys. So, like, when you can't find your terraformer, you could actually just try to kill your opponent through, like, the monkeys, through the elven pikemans, um, and just kind of do small chip damage in. However, even more recently, I've been seeing more and more people, um, kind of move away from that and instead run hangman into the list. So hangman has been interesting because this card was actually kind of, underwhelming when it came out with fortune's hand no one really knew how to use this card well and this card kind of works in terraformer the reason is that if you don't find your terraformer early enough it just becomes too slow as a reliable win condition so you against some matchups say against like control blood for example one thing you could do is just play the hangman for the enhanced seven and then use a treacherous reversal and actually like against certain decks this card is pretty annoying against like I've lost as Elena Haven against a treacherous reversal I've lost as control blood against treacherous reversal so against like the slower matchup where they have a big hand size too especially later into the game and if you don't have any other win condition you could go for this and sometimes you could just cheese cheese wins it's really weird um some people can't play around this card that well and it's really hard to keep track of like the first 10 cards you've played so yeah it's pretty interesting so this list is running less storm fallers in exchange for like the hangman um some additional changes that's been made to the deck is we're only seeing people run two copies of the world this is just because you really don't want to be drawing it when you're all in on your terraformer um one coliseum on high um the kokolo went down to one and instead is running three copies of mecha boomerang elf this card is just really similar to Kokolo in that it's a 2-drop that could recycle itself. However, this is a 2-drop that's a 2-2. Two -two. Um, so it's just slightly better stats early into the game. As well as the card it's going to draw is going to be guaranteed a forest craft 2 play point card which you could fuse into your terraformer. Whereas Kokolo would possibly draw you the world or the Coliseum on high. So yeah, this is the deck. Like I said, Terraformer is a really strong deck right now, and there's a lot of variations of builds that you can play with it. So this deck is still not completely refined. Um, so I think there's still potential for this deck to get even better, but this is kind of like a quick update to Mr. Big Bug Terraformer. And yeah, I highly recommend playing this deck. It's pretty fun and kind of uninteractive, but it's fun when you kill your opponent on turn six with Terraformer. But yeah, this is the deck. Um, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more Shadowverse content. Comment down below if your deck varies a little bit from this Terraformer build. And what is your favorite Forest deck at the moment. And yeah, enjoy the games. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Dragon. Probably discard Dragon. Uh, but we are going first, so that makes us greatly favored. I already think this matchup is pretty favored for us in the beginning. Um, we could just hard look for the Terraformer, I think. In this matchup, Dragon can't really pressure us by turn 6. And they don't really have a way to stop the Terraformer on turn 6 either. So, it should just be a W. If, as long as we draw, okay. We already drew the world, which is not great. Um, drawing one world is fine, because turn 5 is good. But if we draw either the second world or the Colosseum, it could be really bad. Um, so let's just fuse these cards right away. Just so we can start getting the fusions going. Uh, because I didn't want to use the Accelerate because if I drew 
like the world or Colosseum, that'd be super awkward. There's no point using the accelerate card there and giving us extra risk when we can already fuse those cards in. And yeah, we're going fuse again. Because like we could we could actually save the 3-2 because it's a good card to play on turn 3. But I want to be fusing every turn just so I could get the Terraformer OTK on turn 6. And that's the only way we do it. We just fuse, fuse, fuse. Turn 4 we get the Colosseum. Um, this turn though we could actually play the Elf Queen just as a card to protect us. It cycles ourselves. We give ourselves a little bit of risk by drawing into World or Colosseum. But I want to play something this turn. Just so I could take less damage. But yeah, assuming we don't draw, again, those two bad cards, that which we shouldn't, it's like, um, what, the 1 in 15 that we draw one of the two cards that we can't draw, then we should be able to just play the world into the Terraformer. Can't play the Kokolo here because I need the 4 play points to invoke. And actually he's going to deal, like, put us to 14. He's actually probably going to put us to 12 because he's probably going to evolve something. And then that's going to play into the world. You can't really play around the world in this position, I think. It's actually going to kill the Dark Prison Dragon too, which is actually really nice. Even if he evolves here. He might actually play around the world by leaving me at 16. It'd be kind of weird. Uh, but if he's evolving like this, this kind of makes sense. He still can't kill me though, even with this whole board. That's 9-11, he could evolve to 13 damage, so even if I didn't play the world this turn, I'd, I wouldn't be dead. <laughs> but yeah, we're just going to play it anyways. Just for the extra health. And then we get something on the board too. Like the only card we can't draw next turn is the one world in our deck. So that's a 1 in 25 that stops us from getting lethal next turn. Um, we could have actually used the Elven Pikeman evolved after just go face. Because I'm pretty confident my opponent can't kill us from hand. With, or doesn't have enough damage this turn. However, there's like a risk that he either... That he heals up and then it'd be kind of awkward. Um, like just leaving him at 20 and the full 20 damage with the terraformer is just a lot more worth it. And like even if we do draw the world, I would be assuming that he puts me under 14 so I could just activate the world again and then just kill him on turn 7. It's actually not that big of a deal. Um, the only way that he... I don't, the only way that I can't win is like... There's actually no way that I can't win because he either... These... Like if he doesn't put me under 14 here, I probably... I just draw into lethal anyways, but if I draw the world and he puts me under 14, I heal back up and then I could kill him on turn 7. And he can't kill me on his next turn. Like if I draw the world and he, my world's not active, that's like one situation I guess, but then yeah. I think I still have enough time. But that's probably his like highest percentage out is like, don't play around the world and then I draw the world here. But yeah, that's like really hard to make and he's just going to see, which is fair because I don't think you win from here. Shadowcraft, going first against Shadow. Um, this matchup is kind of close. If we have Terraformer on one though, it's hard for them to stop it. So it's just hard mall for it. None of these cards are great anyways. Didn't redraw. We full redraw. Let's try to hit the bug. Nah. Okay, I mean, if we could draw a bug on turn 2, it's still okay. If it's past turn 3, it starts getting a little harder because Child's going pressure too much. Um, I'm actually going to play the Kokolo here just so I could dig one more card into my deck. And try to hit the, the bug, but we missed. Do you want to remove that? So probably going to South Jaguar here. Yeah. 
I mean, he didn't start turn two with the the priest, so at least that's good. Might have to win with the hangman actually. With this, okay, we drew the bug. It's kind of slow, but I think we still take it. Like these green wood guardians aren't going to do anything. I mean, Shadow doesn't have too much heal, to be honest. They just have to sacristan this heal. So, yeah, I mean, the, the Kokolo is getting in there for 2 damage here. It could matter. Optimistic Beastmaster is going to be pretty good. At some point, I do want to get the Coliseum on high out. I just got to find a good time to do it. Because it's going to help me trade, I deal with his boards, I think. But maybe he's slow enough that we're fine. Oh, he's actually going to evolve this. So I could just... If he doesn't have... And some people aren't playing guilt. So he might just be board locked. I'm going to keep... I'm going to throw away the Pike Man and the Primal Giant, I think. I think maybe keeping one Primal Giant is good. The, like, I could also consider keeping the Lionel at throwing away the Lionel because his board's not doing damage and I won't need it. Primal Giants could just sustain me enough. I'm su I'm pretty surprised by this. He unless he has a guilt here, like he's not going to be able to do enough damage to me. I think. So we could just keep him board locked and then I think we're fine. See, we go to 13 this turn. Next turn, he could do an error 3, 6, 8, 9 damage. Whereas for us, how much damage could we do next turn? It might actually be worth it to use the Optimistic Beastmaster this turn then, because I don't think you get double wards up. And he's not killing me, so I could just draw here. Because if I heal up, I get out of range of my world. So I think this is fine. Because I needed to get that extra 2 damage in, just like so I could the Lisa with Terraformer. The board lock for one turn was good enough, I think. If that doesn't work out, we have the world now. Like, we have so many options. But just getting that, buying that one free turn just gave me, like, the time. Because I... The Terraformer came a little bit late. Well, the turn 3 we draw the Terraformer. So it just gave us like that one free turn which we needed. Our opponent as Shadow couldn't really pressure on onto the board here. So even if he has like a... Even if he had like a Fatal Order here, it wouldn't matter because he doesn't have the Priest in his graveyard to get an extra... To have two wards for the terraformer. Even then, we have the Lionel to remove both wards. 